Hi everyone. Uh, this time I'm going to use a technology-based solution, not a uh, analytical approach. So this is the previous one we had. I'm just going to turn that function off. I've, I've got four data points there. And the problem was, of course, that it four data points will allow me to create a cubic polynomial, but it seems like I need a higher degree polynomial. Therefore, I'm going to need some more data points. I'll go back and get a point tool and I'll start adding in some more data points along this curve. Now, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm just going to leave them the way I put them here. However, if I wanted to be very careful about this, I'd zoom right in and I'd have a close examination to make sure like for instance, that first one missed, didn't it? So I really, oh, I can't live with that. I'm going to have to pull that one back. But if I wanted to be really careful, then I'd go and do that for, for oh no, that's a boo-boo. I had a point tool selected, so I can just delete that and then bring this back over here. Now, back to my algebra window. So the points that I've got in my list, I've got my original point C, D, E, F, but I've got these new ones here, G, H, all the way down to N. And it would be very nice if I could somehow have my piece of software work with all of those points at one go. And there is a way to do that. And I'll make a list of points. So I'll just use the name list one. That's a very unimaginative name. And I just have to then name the objects that I want to be collected. So point C, D, E, and point F. That were my original four, weren't they? So C, D, E, F case sensitive, capital F is a point, lowercase f is a function. Then I also want to include G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and N. That's all of them, isn't it? Yes. So there's my list of points. It's just uh, existing in memory. It doesn't do anything on the picture. Now, I'm going to make a new model, and I'm going to let the... Oh, sort of cap lock onto it. I'm going to let GeoGebra do all the hard work for me. I'm going to fit a polynomial and the command is fit poly. Then this is the one. I give it a list of points and I give it the degree of the polynomial. My list is called list one and let's go for a third degree polynomial. It didn't like that very well. What did I do wrong? I know what it didn't like. I forgot to put the one at the end so it didn't collect the idea. There we go. So there's my third degree polynomial. I don't know what that is. That's a mistake. So that's doing a slightly better job than the one that I had there earlier. The one that I had was based on four points only. Of course with only four points my model exactly touched the four points. With a lot more points the third degree polynomial won't exactly touch any of the points but it'll go as closer to them, therefore being a better match for my curve. Now I can do better. I could use a higher degree polynomial. I'm going to stick with an odd degree polynomial because the general shape of my curve is the opposite edges of the function, uh, uh, you know, the ends of the function are going in opposite ways. So I'll stick with an odd degree. And that's, that's actually looking pretty good there. If I zoom up a bit, we can start to see there's a reasonably good match going on with the shape that I'm trying to, to worry about. I don't particularly care what happens to the left of point G or more or less to the right of, over here of point E either. But we're not doing so bad. I might get even better if I do a seventh degree polynomial. Again, ignore what's going on on the outsides. The seventh degree seems to be even better, in my opinion. I think the seventh degree would do a great job of modeling this function. I could try a ninth degree, do you see how if you go too far it starts to introduce these extra little bumps that we don't want? So it is possible to have, um, there is a best choice for a polynomial and it seems like in my example here, the seventh degree polynomial, if I ignore those parts outside the domain that I'm interested in, so I'm really looking here from about two to about seven, that's what I would really want. Uh, that's all there is to it. Um, I hope that's shown you an alternative way to using mathematical modelling. This time we're relying on the 
computer to do all of the hard mathematical work and we're just using that as a tool to help us fit a, a curve, fit a model, in this case a seventh degree polynomial with absolutely diabolical numbers. Look at the coefficients on that polynomial. Without a computer there's no way we would ever have managed to calculate those. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.